Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of American Born Chinese. Great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, uh, continuing what I kind of brought up last episode about trying to pay attention more about directors. Uh, the director of this episode was Destin Daniel Cretton, who is the director of Shang-Chi. Um, and depending on how things play out, he was supposed to do Avengers, Kane Dynasty. There was some talk of maybe he might have done, he was going to do Secret Wars as well, but it didn't, who knows where all that stands anyway. But regardless, I also noticed he's also an executive producer in it, so I might have missed it, but he might have directed other episodes in this too. And I, ju I just happened to notice this one, but he probably directed other ones. But either way, putting it on side, this was a wild episode, and I think it was, it was just, especially opening with that dream sequence, but I felt like it wasn't just a dream, it did seem like Guan Yin, like, literally implanted herself there, but it's like, yeah, everything's connected, I do think it's like, right, he's in this dream with the character Freddy from the Beyond Repair TV show, and a, a news shows up with the odd colored socks, and it's like, Right, because everything's kind of falling apart. My parents are kind of uh, in a rocky situation. I failed to help my friend out, and I, I, you know, I just don't, I don't know what to do. But Guan Yin pops up and tells him, like, right, things might be a lot more connected than you think, you know. And then his parents telling him that kind of come sit down and eat for dinner. And so the moment he wakes up, he looks at the toy. The toy has the still has the bull head and everything, which I constantly forgot about that detail. So. And then he starts no noticing that the day is off, like certain elements from his dream start popping up about certain word and phrases as the autumn equinox. Uh, the fact is Anuj is wearing um, the wrong colored socks, like uh, the, not, not a matching pair of socks. And it's just like, yes, yeah, certain things are just kind of weird. He's a little off trying to figure things out. And he and he confides in the news like, okay, this is what's going on. And the news doesn't believe him at first. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know how to really believe it. But I've never seen you pat so passionate about it. So like, right, I got your back. It's like, yo, that's that's his best friend. So it's like, yo, bro, I got your back, dude. Like, you know, so whatever this is. So they end up tracking down Wei Chen. And it's just like, I guess because... Either Wei Chin was just in, because they can shape shift, so maybe he was just, because he was at the house, he didn't feel the need to hide anymore, or maybe it could be because of the Equinox, because of uh, uh, the the boundary between the bounds between heaven and earth is so thin, like, they kind of, like, are, like, a lot more connected. Maybe it makes it, like, if you're not concentrating, your uh, transformation won't, like, you can't disguise yourself as a human, so maybe that plays a part in it, but Anush sees, and it's like, oh my god, Wait, your dad is the Monkey King, right? It's like, well, it isn't just uh, Kangu Ren, like so many. He even references Dragon Ball because it's like, yeah. I kind of forget that because it's like, I always forget like, yes, Goku's name isn't just Goku. It's son Goku and like, obviously like the Saiyans and the monkey thing. And our first introduction to Saiyans was in Dragon Ball with Goku with the tail. And oh, what did he have? Uh, the Nimrod, not Nimrod. God, I'm confusing that with the Nimbus Cloud. What was the what was the pole that Goku has? Because I forgot how much like that actually does pull from Chinese mythology. It, I think it's because it throws you because you're like right, it is Japanese, but it uh, yeah, it pulls from uh, Chinese mythology as well. I mean, not less. There's probably like there probably is maybe some natural overlap between Japanese and Chinese mythology, or maybe just straight up Dragon Ball pulls a lot from. Um, I always forget because I'm like Kung Fu is. I always forget if that's. I think Kung Fu is Chinese, Karate is Japanese. I always kind of conflate those two. Because I know, like, Taekwondo is Korean, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, it might be just specifically, like, there might be, like, a Korean Taekwondo, like, variant of Taekwondo. Either way, tangents and all that side. My point is, is I always conflate uh, which country Karate originates and where Kung Fu originates from. But either way... Um, like, our trio is kind of like, nah, we gotta figure this all out and figure out what his ultimate plan is. And I love that Anush is going through all these comics about, like, okay, is this uh, canon to real life? And even, like, oh, here's one version of him where he's got, like, these chainsaw for hands. It's like, no, that's not him. And so like, oh, Anush is like, man, I was so hoping that one would be real. But it's like, right, he's got seven brothers like he does in certain comics. And one of the comics, he uses the, the staff. He's gonna basically, he pierces it into the earth and then it ends up 
uh, shooting that power. He's drawing on the power of Earth's core, and he's going to use that to destroy heaven. And you're like, interesting, which is like, that is some super villain maniacal stuff to kind of go that far. It's like, you're that angry and you're that petty about a place that kind of dissuaded you and just like everything that it was you hate because it's a reminder of what you want it. And now it's just like, right, this is just, this is the villain. I mean, to be fair, he, he is the main one that the Jade Emperor was kind of fighting against trying to stop. So it's like, it makes sense. You are the big, big bad uh, in, in some regards. Because he can shapeshift as well. We had never really seen it prior to now. I mean, I guess arguably because he can make himself look like a, just a normal human. Uh, you know, it makes sense that like Mawang can obviously shapeshift. But it's like, right, he, he can't to the extent that his dad. It's like his, I guess um, Wukong can like shapeshift into anything. So maybe that's kind of like where it's uh, Mawang is probably limited in what he can shapeshift into. So... Whereas, like, because, like, Wukong can transform into different animals and, and stuff like that. So, like, his his power is, like, a lot more versatile uh, than it is when it comes to uh, Moonks, maybe. Um, but either way, I just, I love all the storylines converging because while this is all happening on the more fantastical elements, we have the grounded element of Jin's parents, you know, and um, Jin's dad's like, right, we're going to, I took off work early because we're going to find that necklace. And because it does mean something to her, even though she tried to pretend like it didn't, it does mean a lot to her. And him being the one that suggested it made her happy. So they went back to the restaurant and the guy didn't want to listen to it because I will remember you two yell, yelling at each other while you were drunk. Yeah, I remember and stuff like that. And I love that he's like, oh, well, I'm going to take all this. Jin's dad's like, I'm going to take all this. He's like, do me a favor. Those are like two years old or whatever. And I love Jin's mom being petty, like turns that statue upside down and just like, there, you have bad luck. He's like, don't do that. You know? And it just, it was kind of this sweet moment of like them following, trying to get inside the building, trying to find uh, the uh, pendant. And when they go in there, they end up running into, uh, they end up running into uh, Wukong. And the moment uh, Jin's mom gave him that herbal stuff she gave, I was like, Oh my, cause she had picked it up earlier in the episode when she was cleaning up Jin's room and it was the, the herbal stuff that, um, Wei Chen had given back to him, uh, l the episode, in episode six as a gift, but it's like Guan Yin had blessed it. I was like, dude, I was like, I, I kept being like, they made such a point of that, especially that Guan Yin blessed it. I was like, there has to be something to that. And I guess it had extra healing properties. So it maybe countered the glass that was still in. Uh, Song Woon, or maybe it's like, right, that was already dealt with from Mu Wong's blast, but uh, maybe he was just still f injured from it, but it seemed like that did the trick. I was like, funny how destiny works and all these things end up being a lot more connected, because they never found out that, like, right, uh, Wu Kong is like, yo, I'm here because of my son. It's like, right, I didn't want him to make the same mistakes I did, so I ended up all I did in the process is ended up pushing him away, and I came here because he was into some trouble, and you could tell it kind of struck a little bit of an accord with them, especially when Wukong uh, references like, right, our children are like a mirror. And I think both of Jin's parents, when they look at him, they see um, some like I think there's some commonality there where it's like, right, making those mistakes as a parent because you're afraid of your children making the same mistakes you did. So you, you want things better for them. You want believe that things could be better for them. But it's like, right, they never found out that Wei Chin's son, that, that guy is Wei Chin's father. So I, I, I love that. It was just like, yeah, the, this nice parent moment between each other, not knowing who each other is. Like, you are a lot more connected than you realize. But it's, it's you know, it's for them, it's like, oh, it's really sad. He lost everything. He doesn't have a home. It's like, well, he's going to be fine. But you obviously they don't know. But I love the whole thing of what Jin's dad says of like, right, he was right about the children being a mirror. And he's like... When I look at our son, I know that everything's going to be okay. Because for them, it's also like it's he's a beautiful representation of us and our love and every and all our hopes and our dreams and what you know what you know like he kind of represents kind of that that ultimate hope you know in, in that regard and and then obviously we get the reveal that he is the fourth scroll later but it it, it makes sense uh, in that capacity as I kind of eventually figured out but still. I love the cute moment between Jen and Amelia because it's like so many things are happening at once. It's like, right, got to stop this bull demon from like destroying heaven. 
but it's like Amelia, it's like, right, it feels like you're so distracted. Like, because anytime she tries to talk to him, like, he's in another, because she was like, hey, and he was like, hey, because he was trying to look for Wei Chin, so she couldn't find her way in. And it's just kind of like, right, I told you, like, at the beginning of the series, like, I, I just, I didn't really want to hang out like buds, but it's like, since then, we've hung out around more, we've gotten to know each other, you even came over to my house for a science project. And for her, it ended up being a thing of she wanted more. Like, I want to hang out. I But it feels like there's always something coming up, kind of keeping us from kind of connecting. But it's like, I want to hang out, not just as buds. It's more than that. You're like, hey, yo. And that, it's like the timing sucks. Because, like, obviously, like, the soccer game is today, too. So, but Jen comes back and it kisses. You're like, yeah, young love. I'm like, I'm glad that worked out. So... I, I love how they ended up drawing the bull uh, demon out. I, I love how that all played out. It's like, right, let's put on this play. And I love Anuj is, uh, I think, supposed to be Guan Yin. And um, obviously, um, Jin was um, the bull demon. And we also bring full circle, I want to say it was episode three, where we had the mirror thing. I never really quite understood what that was. Well, we see he has a lot of self-esteem issues because he doesn't like looking in the mirror because there's just so many issues he has with himself, which I love that. Yes, he was saying all this stuff to get to the bull demon, but he was also talking about himself where it's like, right, he's like, I am someone that's so busy letting, like, not being myself around other people because I'm scared. I'm scared that if I'm around like other people, either they'll laugh at me or maybe they just won't react at all. And so that terrifies me. And because of that, I end up making mistakes and end up hurting the people I care about. You know, it kind of cuts to Amelia in that regard, where it's just like, I think he's kind of finally learn to kind of cut loose because that was one of the things of like she's like I want to like spend more time around you and like get to really really know you because he's always kind of had his guard up so much because it's like right this is the girl I like and I want to be someone else in front of the girl I like I want to seem cool but she's seen you be dorky and nerdy and she likes you regardless you know but it's that thing of sometimes it's so hard to see ourselves the way other people's do uh, it can be a good thing and bad thing. Like you should never get too wrapped up on how other people see you. But sometimes it's nice to have that other perspective because you can be someone that's so down on yourself who does not like when they look in the mirror. You don't see, you know, you know, have legit has self esteem issues. I know because you know. I have that, and I think that's why I connect to characters like Jin. Like I talk about the character, the main protagonist of the Trails of Cold Steel games. I bring him all the time, Ring Schwarzer, because he has deep-seated self-esteem issues. He does not like himself, and so that's why I think those character, those type of archetypes of characters, really connect with me because I understand what it is to have low self-esteem and not not like who you see looking back in the mirror, you know? And it's just because of all of that, it just kind of makes you sad on the inside and, and Jen kind of expressing that. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's not too late. It kind of talking to the bull, you can turn things around before things get worse, but he didn't want to listen. So had to play into his ego even more and just like, all right, attack him as a person and his self esteem is like, right, you're a cry baby. My brothers are better than me, yada, yada, yada. And it turns out the person he was disguised as was a teacher. And it turns into this whole, because they treat it as like a cosplay performance which i love that the coach is like it, it, how is this even happen? and i love the principal's like justification like oh anuja's parents are f freaking loaded i'm like i love how like that's so interesting we just completely like drop that info he just like he drops Jin off at the end of the episode in a pretty nice car and you're like interesting i wonder what does his parents do that had never really come up before but like it's that, interesting to know that his parents are loaded that's so fascinating like I said, that was just kind of an interesting thing to draw, but I also love that being a justification. Well, everyone, no one else is going to have that context, but for her to be like, oh yeah, his parents are loaded. They probably like hired like a stunt team and everything to make this as like bright and coordinated as it is, but it turns into a dope fight between um, Wei Chen and Mo Wang, and obviously for everyone else in the crowd, they're like, whoa, especially like the people on the soccer team, uh, Travis being like, yo, that was sick, because the, the transition of like, they were under the cloth, and they came out looking different, I was like, yeah, that is, that's for, even, even from, a, you know, looking at it from the technical standpoint, obviously it looks pretty dope, but obviously for their perspective, it's like magic, because it is, um, I was wondering where the beads were going to come into this, but they're kind of weapon-ish, and so, um, Wei Chin is able to use them to kind of like fight and defend himself. Uh, turns into a brawl, full blown Dragon Ball Z. Like now, we're not just like floating, like tie, uh, like Crouching Tiger hitting Dragon styles. Like now, we're full blown 
flying in the air type of stuff. Uh, and it's like, are they flying? And it's like, yeah, I, I, I guess they are. So I just, I love how wild they got with that. And just how things obviously are getting worse and worse at the game because the staff, heaven is opening up. The staff is gathering up the energy it needs. But in that moment, Wei Chen just sees like his, not Wei Chen, um, it's uh, Jin seeing his parents in the crowd and I'm kind of going back to that that dream sequence a little bit. And, you know, it's like, you know, for her, for his parents, it's like you are basically multiple things clashing at one time. You're you're made up of so many pieces and you you don't realize how powerful you really are, the power that's there within you. And he's like, but I don't I don't feel special. And like, how, how do I even how would I even do that? And it's like, well, just be you, Jin. That's all you have to do. And in that moment, he's like, you have to just be brave. It's there inside of you. You just have to take that leap. And he does. And I, w- I thought he was going to grab the staff, but like he jumps up and t- it takes the entire blunt of a blow that was supposed to destroy heaven and it's like didn't get obliterated which i think speaks volumes but it's like hey i'm okay and i love it it's like oh my god you know and luckily um wukong shows up and um takes uh mo uh wong down and it's like right son you did what you said you're gonna do you found the fourth scroll and it's like yeah Jin, you're the fourth scroll. He's the fourth scroll. And then you screaming, he's the fourth scroll. And I think Travis like, he's the fourth scroll. It's like, no one knows what that means, but everyone's cheering for it. It's amazing. And then in that moment, you know, all the celestials disappear and there's just Jin standing there. It's like, and the coach is like, all right, can we get on with the game? It's like, well, the field's a little messed up, but we just kind of skip over that. Like, uh, hopefully the, the soccer game went well. Uh, it's hard to say afterwards, but I love Anuj being like, wow, man. That's unbelievable. That was insane. You kissed Amelia. It's like, shut up, dude. I love it. Um, but then Wei Chen having to say goodbye because it's like, right, uh, uh, Muang is being questioned. You know, he has to be uh, brought to the Jade Emperor to kind of face the consequences of his actions. And Wei Chen wanted to say goodbye. It's like, right, I'm not the one that completed this quest. You were, you know? And... Um, it's like, will I ever see you again? And Wei Chen's like, I hope so, because you're my best friend. I was like, oh! I was like, I, I, I've I, talked about it time and time again. If you don't know anything about me, I am gushy about the whole, like, the power of friendship. I get super sappy about it. That's why I love Kingdom Hearts, which the entire antithesis of that is the power of friendship. Once again, my favorite line, my, uh, my friends are my power. And obviously in the words of Ventus, my friends are my power and I'm theirs. So it's just, it, I get gushy about that. Like, cause obviously that's very like, that's all shown in anime of like, yeah, my friends are my power and they give me the strength I need to go on. You know, like, like a Luffy, I, I fight for my Nakuma or Naruto and so on and so forth. Like our connections make us stronger type of thing. So I, I, I love that. So you're like, ah, oh, interesting. But then there's only like a couple minutes left. So I was like, okay. Cause I'd already looked it up whether or not there was going to be a season two. And we'll get to that in a second. So and the ending, it's like, Jin's like, where's my parents? Mom? Dad? And the moment, um, because Guan Yin had set, said something pretty foreboding. She was like, no matter what happens, like, she was basically like, no matter how this plays out, there will be consequences. And I was like, because of him, like, I was like, did reality shift or something? But it turns out, uh, I want to say, was it Lady Iron Fang? Or was that her name? Not Fang, Fan, I believe. She's the one that liked, uh... Mo Wong all those years ago, like back in episode four, she showed up and she's like, he's like, who are you? And she's like, I'm the one who should be asking you that question. But now after tonight, I know who you really are. Now you're going to come with me or you'll never see your parents again, which I love. They had to end it on a joke. Could you say that a little sore? My Chinese isn't that good. It's like, Jesus. At this point, you're going to have to double down on your efforts of how, uh, learning your Chinese, especially just how often it's used, especially in such big celestial stuff thrown your way. So so it definitely ends off in a way where you're like, right, there's still more story to tell. But at the time of me recording this, which I'm getting to this, like I'm like finishing this up at the very least. Like I said, I've been watching this sporadically with other stuff. But yeah, I, at the time of me recording this, it's been a, a little over a month since this drop and there's still no news. So I do hope that... Um, uh, Disney uh, does like renew this for a second season because I, I can only assume by the way this ended, I can only assume like they're 
this doesn't tell the full story of the graphic novel, maybe only a fraction of it. So I, I don't know how much it would take to tell the full story. Maybe it's like, hey, it's because it's a one story, like it's a one graphic novel thing. It's not like it's an ongoing thing. It's like it's a one off of like, yep, this entire story's done in one graphic novel. I mean, I don't really know like how the graphic novels are like divided up. Like I know, like a like a, a comic book run. Like obviously there are issues and like you know, so it's like a you know, I mean just like a manga is, and then like manga are compiled into volumes. So I guess that's probably the more equivalency of like a graphic novel is not all. It's not fully the same thing as a volume, but it kind of is. But a graphic novel is just kind of like maybe like the entire arc or whatever of some. I, I don't know. I I don't. I think I know like the delineation. Like I said, I think a manga volume and a um, graphic novel probably like kind of similar things either way i'm i'm so i do hope we get a season two but the big question is why is she kind of sort of evilish i was like well we know she had a thing for uh mo wong so maybe he wasn't going this alone maybe he always had her support all these years later i mean it might even be the thing of maybe she influenced him to go bad like maybe she's the real big bad and he was kind of like going in service of her because she's the one that did serve because he's the one that brought up the fourth scroll stuff all those millennia ago and she was fascinated in it so now she is going to be interested in jen finding out that he is uh the fourth scroll now what she's going to do with that who knows how that plays out i mean we didn't even get injured like because I should also point out, we didn't get introduced to the Jade Emperor at all. We never got to see who they were. So you would assume if you were to go forward, she would be the main antagonist. And we'd probably get introduced. Like They'd probably cast a Jade Emperor. Like I said, it's been a month and there's been no war. But I do hope that we do get a season two. Because um, a lot of stuff is resolved. But obviously there's still more story to tell when you have a cliffhanger like that. So I'm fingers crossed hoping for a season two. Because I'd love to see where all of this would end up taking us going forward. Um, especially for Jin with like, you know, what does being the fourth scroll mean? Um, what does that mean? Like, does he get like superpowers or what? Like, how does that, I mean, because he's literally the scroll of power. So like, how does that manifest itself? Did he absorb some of that energy from the Earth's core when it hit him? So does he have like some deep energy inside of him? He just hasn't awakened yet. Uh, will his parents be in the know about everything he's gotten mixed up in on the celestial side of things? So there's that. Because Wei Chin said he wanted to go investigate and find out how Jin is the fourth scroll. Like I said, it, I just ele uh, delegated simply to like, hey, both of his parents are from each of the warring factions that fought over the power and they found a union together and that union culminated in Jin. So... I wonder where we kind of extend that more and kind of like get more of the family and maybe some of the family beef over the years will kind of pop up with some of like Jen's parents uh, relatives maybe. Maybe that's something they won't bother deep diving but Jen balancing all the celestial stuff even more so. Uh, I mean the only person that's in the know is a news show. It's like right how do you balance that with where the way where things between you and Amelia are progressing. That's also something we got to uh, uh, remember too. Time works differently between heaven and earth. So he might get sent to heaven at certain points in the story. And it might seem like he's only going for a little bit. But, you know, he can be going for an entire month at a time. So that could complicate things on, on the school front, on the relationship front. So there's a lot of elements they could play with utilizing that uh, with whatever direction they end up taking the story in a possible season. Two. Like I said, I'd, I'd love to see where things would go from here. But uh for now, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good